Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to another video. So I'm still going through my curriculums for my company to try and update this bit of kit. So this kit's been physically updated and I need to go through the curriculum. So in this video, we have finally a full bridge rectifier, which is pretty cool. I love these things, man. It's just so cool that you can just do that with just six diodes. So we've got six diodes, one, two, three, four, five, six, six diodes. And I've got a bulb, which is just providing a bit of a load to this, um, motor and then here's my power supply over here yeah so if i disconnect that then that stops cool so we'll just jump straight into the worksheet um the plan with these videos is not really for me to learn much like i'm not trying to learn the intricate details i just want to whiz through it and just kind of get a bit a bit a bit more comfortable with this product and the idea really behind the fact that i've got a brushless motor sorry a brushed dc motor and a brushless dc motor and then i'm driving the brushless DC motor via the brushed motor or vice versa and what that entails. So I guess essentially this motor is driving this one and this is acting like an alternator, which is generating a three phase voltage. And then that three phase voltage is then being rectified here via this full bridge rectifier. And then I'm gonna look at the output on my scope. So. Let's start with worksheet 12. Uh, the free phase rectifier is very like the single phase full wave rectifier. It just has another two diodes in it. Single phase, okay, free phase, yeah, okay, yep. Uh, the photograph shows a free phase rectifier from an alternator with diodes clearly visible. Is it really clearly visible? Ah, okay, yeah, one diode. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you can see all three diodes, that's cool. I would like to learn more about cars. So this, this is a good experience for me as well. All right, so it says build this circuit, which I have done. I've just got the addition of like just these two bits, but you'll see that why in a minute. Um, so set up the circuit shown on the previous page. The bulb acts as a load so that some current flows. Use a two, using, using a two channel oscilloscope, so I've got one channel there, uh, with the setting shown below, connect the zero volt terminal to point P uh, labeled. Okay, so that is, I wanna put my, Scope zero volts there at the bottom. It's got my zero volts there. And what does it say? Then connect the first part of my scope to R. Where was R labeled? R is over there. All right, so then if we run it, and then what do we want? We want connect to a channel B, firstly to point S and then T. So point S, so second channel zero volts can go here and then point s cool so if we look at our scope what are we what are we seeing here so we're seeing i'm i'm not the best at reading scopes to be honest with you so i need to that's something i need to get better at but i guess comparing the two I've got like a 5.2 volt peak to peak. I don't know how accurate that is. Um, and it just looks like they're just slightly phase shifted by how much I couldn't say. Let's have just pause it. Uh, what's that? Yeah, I can't, I can't tell basically. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the scope means. I can just see that the two signals are the same, but there, there's, there's a slight phase shift between the two. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I'll just give you a closer look if you want. So you can see the two signals are pretty much the same. Slightly phase shifted, yeah? Using the access in the student handbook, sketch the signals, so an R, S, and T. So yeah, I didn't I didn't move it to T, so let's just do that, but it will be exactly the same, right? Just again shift it a bit more. So can I see the difference? I wish I had a four channel scope. But yeah. Is that the next thing I need to order? First, I need to learn how to read scopes first. All right, anyways, so uh, don't worry too much about the size of the voltage. Just try to get the time and relationships correct. Next, look at the voltage across the bulbs, across the bulb, okay, by connecting channel A to Q. So channel A, which is this channel down here, and I'm going to the output, which is Q. Hey, and there you go. So on there now, you can now see a fully rectified signal. <laughs> That's cool. 
Yeah, so that's cool, isn't it? So you can see there. Let's just let's just run it. So that that's my that's my A fully rectified. If I go back to the original, that was it unrectified, yeah. And then there rectified. Well, then the current at the same voltage. Five volts there. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that is nice. That is so cool to see. All right, yeah. So we got a fully rectified signal there. Um, obviously you can see it's bumpy there because that's where we don't have a capacitor. So I believe it tells me to add a capacitor. Yeah, it says. So it says add a two two thousand two hundred microfarad capacitor in parallel with the bulb. So that's why I've got with my capacitor. Damn, I've lost it. Where are you, Cap? It's a big one. This this big one. So this 2200 microfarad capacitor, I don't really have a good way of sitting in here, so I'm just going to add tap it on. So if I, if you watch the screen, I'll tap it on. There you go. So now you lose all that ripple. So take it off, ripples back, add it on, ripples gone, take off, ripples back. I'll just do that so you get a close up view. So it's off, it's added, ripples gone, ripples back. So I guess that's the, that capacitor there is just, just to smooth it. Um, the reason I'm not adding it on is that I don't actually have space on my board. And I do this kit does come with a second board, but I can't be asked installing all the pillars. So I'm just going to have to try and squeeze all of these kits onto one board. Hopefully it doesn't demand two boards because I can't be asked installing these. Anyways, um, cool. So it says, so what? In worksheet 11 on AC generators, we said that waveform peaks were 120 degrees apart. You should now see that the rectified peaks at R, S, and T are 60 degrees apart. Okay, so apparently this here was 60 degrees apart. I can't, I couldn't even confirm nor deny that. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, right. So you got the start of that way from there, and then where's the start there? So there to there, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I could tell degrees on here. There must be, I know there's like cursors, so I can bring on cursors. Then I could, I guess I could select time. All right. So, let's zoom in here. I've got my cursors on, I've got time. This is kind of just me learning. So work that, okay. So select there, that's the start. Uh, did that just do it or did it not do it? Okay, so change to my next cursor. I'm going to start there. Oh dear, it's gone. When I click it, it goes, the bugger. So what does that tell me? That says the, the, the change in time is 9.8 milliseconds. And then like, can you do some maths for me, please? So source... That, yeah. I know there's like, there's mass functions. So I could do mass functions. C, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I'm i not, <laughs> what? I'm in the FF, I'm in the frequency domain now. Get me out of the frequency domain. What is going on here? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I can't make use of this. I'm not, I'm no expert in electronics. I'd like to be, but I'm not. I'm a PLC guy, me. Cool, all right, so that's the end of this video. We're on to, next video we'll be doing the worksheet 13, which is the DC generator or dynamo. So yeah, I mean, I'm interested in all this stuff. This is not a world I really understand. Um, so it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I understood full wave rectifiers, full bridge rectifiers, rectifier, full, was it? What does Media Um in a electro boom? Full wave rectifier, full bridge rectifier, full bridge rectifier, I think it is. Anyways. Cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. I want to make a full bridge rectifier.